Hi, it's me, Ingrid INFP, and we're going to be making this vegetarian pole beans, uh, pole bean tacos. Uh, that is like with a vegetarian pole beans thing instead of uh, meats. Um, and the first step is obviously to uh, cut the vegetables. Um, let's put you guys on here. Um, the first step is cutting the vegetables, but the first step is really actually just turning on the oven to 220 degrees. And um, I don't know, it doesn't really say, uh, I never know which setting to use. So um, yeah, that's going to be exciting, I guess. Um, we'll try this. Um, and uh, let's go. First is uh, I've peeled the, the garlic um, and I have these uh, onions. Um, I don't know why you I have two onions, but okay. Um, let's cut off this piece and this piece. I think that this onion is pretty old. Uh, to be honest, I did not start, I started making this recipe like about four or five days after getting my delivery because, you know, I, I couldn't do all of the cooking for all of the three recipes that I got. So this one I've uh, waited quite a bit with and I think that might, it might have given me problems with my onion. Um, so I'm just going to peel it. Anyway, I know that a lot of you guys like watching just me doing things. I hope that you can use this video to like do something else in the background. Uh, maybe you want to cook something or you're cleaning or, um, doing some other chore, uh, puts it in your earbuds or in your headphones or something, and just have somebody doing something else in the background. Um, I always find it pretty useful for myself when I do this. Um, okay, we're going to put that there. Of course, the tomato is not good as usual. It's the it's the same for all of the vegetables, to be honest. Okay, uh, let's cut off the little piece out of there and the little piece off of this uh, there. Okay, good. So they want me to. Um, Oh, let me just check if the oven is, yeah, okay, the oven is going, something is happening, at least. Hmm, okay, at least this onion looks like it's fine. The other onion, still not sure, not sure about that, but uh, okay. How do they want us to do? Just in thin slices, it doesn't really say much, but if we just go like that. It should be fine. Um, okay. Um, hmm. To be honest, I don't think I want to have such big pieces. <laughs> um, is there a way to like... I, I have all these problems about cutting vegetables, which is why I started with HelloFresh from the start. Um, oh no, my eyes are starting to water and I am dying. Ugh, ugh, my eyes. Ugh, okay. I'm tearing up, I'm tearing up, I'm dying. Ugh. Okay, well, I told you guys about the fact that there was going to be a meeting between me and my boss, 
uh, no, well, me and all the residents and my boss, and we had our pre-meeting together with all of the residents. Um, but I don't know. I feel like our boss is just like unloading the problem on us, which is actually his problem. It's his problem if we don't have enough rooms for each doctor. Like, you know, we shouldn't have to decide who is going to go into which room. Like, petty school children. I feel like I want to have my own room and I don't care how long other people have been doing their residency. Um, you know, of course, the older residents went there, they went a sort of seniority hierarchy kind of thing where they get to choose the room because they've been residents the longest. I'm, I'm in the middle because obviously I'm not, I'm not, neither new, like it's my second year, uh, but I'm not uh, the most senior resident at my place. We have a, two of them that are approximately four years in. Oh my gosh, my eyes. I need to wash my hands two seconds. Okay, wow, I had to like wash my uh, eyes pretty much. Um, I'm still kind of teary eyed, but so I'm making a little bit of a, like a garlic in like small, small, small pieces if I can. Um, I like making like a, the garlic into like a little accordion kind of thing, like a little like that you don't really cut it into the end. Um, but I don't think that that's the way that to do it, but it's the only way for it to like actually s stay. Okay, that was some garlic. That was some garlic. Okay, we got quite a lot of cloves of garlic in this one. Usually they just give you like one measly garlic piece so now. I actually got like around four garlic pieces, so hooray for HelloFresh. Um, yeah, I'm taking a pause from doing uh, the second onion. Like, I don't think I can actually film while I'm doing the onion because uh, <laughs> I I need I need to survive first of all, not to uh, worry about anything else. Okay. <sighs> so anyway, my residency program, um, at the moment we are like only residents because it's the summer and like one specialist at the, at my healthcare center. Um, and it is kind of stressful for us, I would say. Um, because even though we can deal like on our own, we really do need somebody who, who is a specialist to help us. Um, we can try to helping ourselves and like being, you know, teaching ourselves things. Um, but sometimes it is like, oh, we don't really know what we're doing, do we? And, uh, yeah, I had a patient now that got, I took a blood sample and I found out that this person has tuberculosis and I was like, oh my gosh, I don't know what to do about that. Is this blood sample, does that mean that you have an active tuberculosis or a latent tuberculosis? So it's nice to have like colleagues that I can talk to with about, but they basically told me like, just call the infection clinic because we don't know. Um, and so it's a lot of just like trying to figure out life and not like die, um, basically. And um, yeah, it's not super secure uh, situation. Um, I also uh, had a patient who had postpartum depression and had like really bad postpartum depression. And I was like, oh my God, like, why is she even here at my healthcare center? Um, so I wrote to psychiatry for help. But she said that she'd been at, to another healthcare center with her previous uh, um, 
baby and she didn't get uh, good help so now she changed um, healthcare centers and yeah I feel like she's just been forgotten and now like you know I want to save the day <laughs> and I have a problem with the fact that I'm the only person who's who seems to care and then it's like but then I care too much and then it, it ruins my day and yeah I, I get worried about my patients like what what's going to happen to them and you know now it's the middle of the summer and nobody's working and I don't know what to do and uh, yeah and my supervisor has also been sick and it was like you know if one person is sick right now uh, basically our whole system falls apart so yeah I had to be the daily doctor um, and it's it's okay being at the daily doctor when I know that a specialist will come maybe in the afternoon and be the daily doctor in the afternoon like uh, answering all the questions and everything that I can't answer but because I don't have a relay system that works because there is no specialist behind me to fix the problems that I couldn't fix then we we start getting into a problem you know um, so there were often questions that the nurses couldn't answer and so then I had to answer them and then I maybe didn't answer super 100% correct and then I have to fix my mistakes because I prescribed like the wrong antibiotic because I I I should have met the patient but I couldn't um, because while well, I was doing other things I had other patients and maybe some patients would have gotten get better care had it not been the summer and had people like you know had we had uh, as many people working uh, as we usually do you know it seems like a lot of things get put on pause during the summer and then like I have to work extra when I'm there during the summer so that means that <laughs> that makes it more likely that we'll uh, not work during the summer and then like the cycle continues you know anyway that was the garlic um, I'm going to do the other onion uh, but without you guys bye Okay, wow, look like magic, the second onion uh, got cut. I almost died once again with my teary eyes, but um, now we're there. So what we're going to do is that we're going to put olive oil into a pan. Here we've got the pan. Here we've got olive oil. Ooh. Yes, that was a bit too much olive oil, but okay. Um, it was supposed to be a half a uh, spoon, but okay. And then we put it on mid heat. So this is mid heat, I guess. 1.75 if you want to say that three is the <laughs> is the highest. Um, okay. Um, and so we're going to put uh, the onion in there. Ugh, I hate how they always make you like cut all these vegetables and then it's like, wait, the garlic doesn't go in there yet. Um, okay, uh, we're just going to uh, put all this in there. So we're caramelizing onion, which I don't know how you do that, but uh, we're going to learn. I've heard that caramelizing onions is difficult, but maybe this isn't like the actual caramelizing like that you're supposed to do. I mean, this might be just like the HelloFresh version of caramelizing an onion. I don't know. Um, anyway, there's all of the onion. Now my hands are going to be smelling like onion, but they were already smelling like garlic, so, okay. Now, where were we? We um, are going to do five, six minutes of uh, the, that on the, the stove. And then we are going to put in the balsamic vinegar. Uh, we're going to be putting two uh, spoonfuls of water, oh, um, a half a teaspoon of sugar, and a pinch of salt. But that's later on. Um, and then that's when we're going to do that until it has caramelized three to five minutes. 
and then put all this into a bowl, like a separated bowl. Then we're going to do a marinating the pulled beans. Now I've put the pulled beans in the, the freezer and they've been in the freezer for about four or five days. So uh, and they might be frozen still. Um, but I figured that it's better to fix with chicken and meats um, first rather than doing this. Okay, let's get a bowl. Here's the bowl. Here's the pulled bean mixture. Okay. Uh, it's still icy, which is not great, but okay. Um, I did take it out uh, for like an hour before, but it hasn't unfrosted. Okay. Uh, during that time, uh, they say to uh, take the oregano, half a package, salt, uh, a quarter of a teaspoon, which basically is just like a few pinches, I guess. Um, some pepper, the garlic, and a little bit of olive oil. So, okay, half a package of this oregano stuff. But, you know, when am I going to use that rest of the oregano? Let's put all the oregano in. Or three quarters. <laughs> three quarters. Okay, good. Just so that there's a little bit left in case in case we need more in some other part of the recipe. I don't know. Okay, that was the oregano. Um, I still have some chili, but that, that could be like the last step, I guess. Then we've got uh, a pinch of pepper. Okay. Um, I guess a few more pinches of salt. That seems about right. Okay. And uh, then we, um, oh, um, that's the garlic should go in there. So we will need to put the garlic in. Do, 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 do. Oh, the garlic is starting to smell like something's happening. Um, I probably should uh, use the spatula, which I haven't cleaned before this video. Uh, let's clean the spatula while the onions are, are uh, getting in the pan. Okay, that was the spatula. Okay, good. Um, right. Uh, that was that. Let's put the garlic into this um, um, Pulled, I, I keep thinking pulled pork, but it's pulled bean um, because it's the vegetarian version of pulled pork. Okay, so there was the garlic. Now, um, they say to tw twist it around. Obviously, it's still frozen inside, but I hope that like while it defrosts, I can at least have a little bit of spices in it. <laughs> um, hmm. It's very salty. And oregano y. Hmm. Okay. Wash our hands. Okay. Now, uh, that was um, uh, this bowl, which we're just like keeping to the side. Um, now I'm hearing something happening by the onions. So that's good. Something is happening by the onions. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, okay. So the onions are cooking. While that is happening, I don't know why they wanted us to put the oven on so far in advance, but... I'm guessing that something needs to be put in the oven at some point. Um, oh no, it says to warm the oven if you don't have a microwave. But I have a microwave, so what are you even dealing with? 
I don't want to deal with uh, the oven, to be honest, because it's so hot outside. Let's turn it off. It says to heat the oven if you don't have a microwave, which I, you know, typical, typical me. I only read the first part of that sentence. Okay, right. So that's one last thing to think about is the oven. Um, good for all of us because it's really hot outside and inside. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the onions. They say to put um, two spoonfuls of water, right? Two spoonfuls of water. Okay, that was one spoonful, which I got only half through. I don't know how to how to do this in a good way. <laughs> because my stove is so far away from from the water source that it's like this puts a little bit more water. There we are. Okay. Uh, that was the water. Um, then let's uh, see. We need to put in the balsamic vinegar. And that. Okay, a pinch of salt. Let's put the pinch of salt in. Okay, that was the pinch of salt. Um, let's put the balsamic, balsamico vinegar. Mm. Oh, I love balsamic vinegar. It smells so good. Okay, there was that. Mm. All right. And then we were going to put some sugar. So I haven't taken out the sugar. Let's... Um... And that's, I guess, what caramelizing the onion is about, right? Um... That's the caramelizing part. And that's where... Hmm, it smells good. Okay. So that was some of the... Let's mix the balsamic vinegar. They, wow, it really went just on one area, didn't it? But I guess a lot of it is also the um, olive oil. Okay. Uh, we've got that going on. Then it says uh, to do that for uh, five minutes approximately, and then uh, put it to the side. Okay, and during this time, uh, we are going to do the avocado cream, which I hope that this avocado is okay. Um, it's always a surprise when I, I mean, I know that there are ways to choose an avocado, but I did not choose this avocado. So I hope it's okay. Now, um, that's garlic. Oh god, I got some garlic in my mouth. Mmm. Um. Oh, I forgot to put some olive oil in this. Uh, I need to put a bit of olive oil on top of the pulled pork stuff. Okay, good. Um. We're going to mix it up a little bit in that pulled pork thing. Let's cut the avocado. Um, no, unfortunately it feels quite soft, the avocado, but maybe there's some part of the avocado that's good. Oh, it seems okay. It seems okay. Okay, then it says to uh, cut the um, lemon into um, slices, which uh, there are many ways to do this. I usually cut it in half. And then do the slices from there because that way I can get the seeds out pretty easily. Um, which you can't really do if you keep the slices intact. Um, but it does make for a more sloppy, sloppy thing than like just doing it horizontally. Okay. Um, there we go. Mm, smells like lemon. Mm, I love lemons. I could just eat lemons. Uh, oh, 
there was a seed. Uh, there it goes. Oops, the seed did not go into the trash can, right? There we go. Okay, so we have lemons, we have avocado. When we have lemons, we make an. <laughs> when you have lemons, you make guacamole, not lemonade. Okay. I'm guessing that this is guacamole. What they mean by avocado cream in Swedish. Because I don't know if Swedish people know what guacamole is. Anyway. Um, I don't know, some parts of this uh, avocado is not great, but... Let's check up on the onions. Yeah, things are going okay on the onion side. Maybe a little bit longer. Um, now. Oops. Okay. We're going to squish the avocado into a little, little bowl. Good. So we're going to just scoop it out. I really like scooping it out. Ooh, scoop. Ah. So satisfying when you get like a big clunk. But the only thing is that you need to take off the little stick that comes out from the avocado. Okay, good. Okay, there was the avocado. Maybe we should uh, like go down on the heat or on the um, onions. I'm turning the heat off for onions. Um, okay. Oh, it says to just do half of the lemons, but yeah, I'm not going to just keep half a lemon running around. Okay, now squish. Okay, we'll need this fork, I think. It's, it's probably easier with fork, but it's okay to just cut it up first. And you can use the spoon also to like push it to the sides. But sometimes that does not work. At least it gets the work halfway done um, until I get the fork. Um, it says, but it also says to like mix some other things. So I don't know why they do this, but they tell us to mix it together with um, mayo which, um, you know, kind of hurts my feelings, but I do want to know what kind of combination that would make with uh, avocado and, and mayo. A little bit of um, lemon juice. Mm. I do like lemon juice. Good. Okay. That's great. The rest we, we don't care about. Um, I really like using the avocado up. There we go. Okay. Um, a little bit of salt and pepper and then put the mayo in, I guess. Salt, pepper. Can we put some chili? I'm going to put some chili from my previous recipe. Ooh, that was a little bit too much pepper. Okay. But you know, what is what is an avocado? What is a guacamole without any spice? I need to have some chili. Okay. I'm adding some of those chili flakes from earlier. Because I feel like that is something that is needed. Maybe maybe the chili flakes should go into the um, into the pulled pork uh, marinade thingy, but oh well. And then we're going to put the mayo in. Um, 
And then you can also put some olive oil, which I'll, I'll put some olive oil in too, but not too much. Oop. Oh. It's always too much. Maybe I'll just like sip a little bit. I'm the kind of person who just loves just sipping on olive oil. I know that it's gross for some people, so I won't show you me drinking olive oil. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that is what I'm doing behind the scenes, if that is what you're wondering. Okay, so there was the avocado. Um, there's the onion. There's the... Um, here we have the pulled pork. Or not pulled. Pulled uh, beans. Um, so now we've done the... Well, well, we should put some mayo. But to be honest, I think I'm going to just keep some of the mayo for like the last stage. Uh, where we... Um, like drizzle it on top of the tacos. This is just my own version of the recipe. Because like, wow, I'm not going to be using too much mayo here. It's not worth it. It's not worth ruining a good avocado with so much mayo. But a little bit of mayo, I guess. We're testing it out because they tell us to do it that way. Okay, to be honest, it could have been better without the mayo. But uh, here we are at least. Maybe it makes it a little bit more sticky so that I can like stuff it into the taco better. Anyway, uh, let's pause the video. Okay, so I uh, emptied out the um, onions into a bowl. Now we are putting more olive oil into this pan. Uh, good. And uh, now we're going to put the um, pulled beans into the pan. Um, again, middle heat, and it's put it three to four minutes until it's brown. Oh, I did not realize how much oregano would be stuck at the bottom of this bowl. But um, we'll, we'll be able to put some in there. Uh, good. Good, so that's going on in there at the moment. Okay. I finally bought the, the plane tickets for my trip to um, uh, Edinburgh and then to um, my hometown in France. It's um, going to be my first solo trip um, to, well, basically a foreign country, even though, the, I mean, I wouldn't say that Scotland is like, so foreign because everybody speaks English. Um, but it's going to be the first time that I'm going to a new place without like visiting somebody that I know. Um, so I don't know what I'm going to be doing. Um, I haven't booked a hotel yet or anything, but I, I've been looking about things like you can do. Apparently in Edinburgh, there's like a, a a medical history museum uh, which seems pretty cool because I'm a medical student right uh, I uh, went to look at the Royal Mile see all of the touristy things I go to Edinburgh Castle um, you know actually say Edinburgh like they say in Edinburgh it's a bra um, <laughs> Anyway, and I went to see kilts, I went to see tartan, I went to see uh, bagpipes, and um, I went to uh, see uh, whiskey, <laughs> even though I'm not going to taste any whiskey because I don't want to buy any alcohol. <laughs> to be honest, I just don't, don't really love alcohol. Um, so I'm not going to be doing the whiskey tour. Uh, mm, I'm just eating some of the lemon. Um, so yeah, I won't be doing that. And, um, yeah, what else is there? I, um, I'm thinking of doing one, uh, like, guided tour bus ride visit, um, where, like, they pick you up in the morning uh, at, like, 
in the center of Edinburgh and then they take you to some other city. And I'm thinking maybe I could go on like an Outlander tour because I'm a real fan of Outlander and to see all of the castles, the filming locations of uh, different scenes um, and maybe learn the history of these castles and all of that. So um, yeah, I think that that would be exciting. Um, I also want to look at uh, the cemetery in Edinburgh because apparently they had like people would steal would steal human bodies from the graves so they put like fencing on top like a little like it looks like it's to stop the zombies from coming out but it's actually to stop people from stealing the bodies for medical students because apparently the, those bodies were worth a lot of money at that time when they were like basically well everybody was starving um, except for the medical students who would pay astronomical sums to get bodies for dissections. Um, yeah, and Edinburgh was real center for all that. I went to uh, see if I can get into like a Hogwartsy mood. I, I mean, I used to really be into Harry Potter until I found out about well J.K. Rowling's views on the world, which aren't in line with mine. Um, but I was a real Harry Potter fan, um, maybe around 10 years ago, um, or 15 years ago, <laughs> at least, like, when I was around 15, that was when I was, like, really into Harry Potter. I read, uh, to my little brother, who was, was nine years younger than me, I read five of the Harry Potter books. We managed to get through five of the books until I moved away from home at 18. So it was kind of our own thing, me and my brother, that we would that I would read him Harry Potter. His favorite character was Dobby, I think. <laughs> and he was like, Dobby is free. <laughs> uh, so my brother really liked Dobby. And he really liked Ron. Um, I really liked Neville and Luna Lovegood, because they were weird. I always I've always been into the weird characters. Okay, uh, now they want us to put the tortillas into the microwave. So this is where you could have used the oven if you didn't have a microwave. But to be honest, like the amount of, of energy used into this, uh, I'm not going to deal with the oven. We're going to put it into the microwave. So 30 to 60 seconds. Um, Let's, uh, let's not do all of the tortillas at once. Let's do three tortillas. Okay. Uh, three tortillas and then let's um, put them into this bowl. Because I don't have, really know where the plates are anymore. Okay, let's... Uh, my microwave Robert has been with me through thick and thin, I guess. Let's just keep a check on that. Uh, and then uh, they tell us to uh, deal with the tomato, uh, basically cut it into small pieces. And this tomato is still hard and orange, so this is exciting. Um, oh, no. I don't know, let's just make pieces. I I hate the squish of tomatoes when they're like this. Um, okay. When there's like a part of it that's hard and a part of it that's squishy, it's terrible. Um, but here we are at least. We're trying. We're trying to not get disgusted at things. I think that uh, the um, meat, not meat, um, I think that the meat is, uh, or the pulled bean vegetarian alternative is uh, done, so let's just turn off the heat, because I think that it's cooked enough. 
you know. Um, okay, now we've got our tortillas, which are actually a little bit too hot, so we'll have to pause the video here, I think. Um, we're also going to um, clean this uh, salad that is actually quite sad. Uh, so, two seconds. Okay, here we go. Here we have a tortilla. It's a small one. And uh, I've also uh, uh, cleaned the uh, salad leaves. Um, so, um, what do we put inside our tortilla? I think I put the tortillas a little bit too long in the microwave, but okay. Um, we fill it with the pole beans, we fill it with the salad, and the, the onion, and the tomato. And, the, and this. <laughs> and then you can have the, the lemon on the side. So let's see how this goes. We can't put too much of each thing in each tortilla. Um, unfortunately, I went to fill them up with tons of stuff, but that is not going to be good. And um, maybe we can put like a, in a bed of salad. <laughs> Uh, there we go, a bed of salad, a little bit of tomato, uh, there we go, and um, let's see, we're going to have some uh, avocado cream, some avocado cream, there we go, and um, some onions. These, these tortillas are too small for the amount of stuff that I want to put in. Uh, okay, and uh, then um, let's uh, top it off with a little bit of mayo. <laughs> okay, that did not work well. Uh, we tried, at least, uh, there. Um, at least we put a little bit of mayo in there. Mm? Okay, we've got the mayo, we've got the avocado, um, and uh, some uh, lemon juice on top. On top. Oh, that, that, that was the lemon that I used. Uh, we need to use another piece of lemon. Ooh, yes. Okay, there we are. Here we've got uh, the tortilla, number one. And I think that looks pretty... Pretty close to the original, but maybe the pulled pork was supposed to be a little bit lighter. I don't know if it was. A, it was supposed to be like yellowish, and mine is pretty brown still. And and I mean, of course, those tortillas are huge. I mean, I can't. <laughs> this isn't comparable. But okay. Um. So yeah. Um. I'm going to taste these and uh, write in the comments uh, what I think. Um. So have a great day, everybody. Bye.